Hi everyone, we are here with another program with Armstrong from My Dog and Me, and with me today is Cher Miller with her dog. This is Ezra. Ezra. And Ezra is a three-year-old Papillon. And also helping with the interview will be Robin Peterson, who owns Rainbow Dog Academy. Yes, I do. So we're going to go through and talk to everyone about the Papillon and let you know some information about that dog in case you'd be ever interested in getting this type of a dog in the future. Okay, Robin, it's all yours. All right. So, Sharon, tell us a little bit about my um, good buddy, Ezra, here. Ezra is a three-year-old Papillon, as I said. The breed originates from back in the 1300s, and there's some dispute where it comes from, whether it be Spain, Italy, France, Belgium, in that area of uh, Europe, but it was made popular mostly in France, and Madame Pompadour and Marie Antoinette and Henry VII all had Papillons, and they've all been seen in Renaissance art in the paintings there. So they didn't become popular in the United States till much later, uh, late 18, 1900s, something like that. So originally though, this is a papillon, which is French for butterfly, meaning the ears, because that is the prominent feature of this dog, if this breed. There is also the original version, which is called now Feline, that's P-H-A-L-E-N-E, -E, where the ears are actually dropped more like the spaniel, which is from the background where papillons come from. So they are originally spaniels. They were called toy spaniels and uh, Belgian spaniels and a number of little squirrel dogs, continental spaniels, and dwarf spaniels. <laughs> so this, yeah, this is actually from the drop ear to the erect ear is actually a genetic mutation that occurred and then has been promoted throughout the breed. And it is more popular in the United States. And you see most of the erect ears in the United States. Can I ask a question about the ears? Is that, how much of that is actually the ear and how much is the fur? The actual ear is quite large mm -hmm. and as puppies you have to like large ears to like a papillon puppy because that much of it is ear and then the rest of this is, is, is fringe. Okay. And as puppies their ears are very large and they come up, uh, the larger the ear the longer it takes for the ears to become erect. And it can be 12, 13, his, both ears did not come up and stay up until he was about 14 weeks old. They would come up and down as they were teething. <laughs> kind of like so, a German Shepherd. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, we were hopeful that they would both come up and they, they actually did. And his breeder does breed for large ears. And so that's what we got. Can they compete in confirmation if they have one ear down and one ear up? Or they does it cannot. have to be up? It has the both up or both down, but they cannot be one of each. And in confirmation, are the ones with them up in different confirmation than the ones with the down? They, they are not. Okay. They, are, they are put in the same class okay. of happy. Okay. Now, Ezra is a confirmation champion, he correct? Is. Yes, That's correct. And with the United Kennel Club, yes. With the United Club. Okay. So tell us about your standard for your breed. And okay. again, the standard is, and we're going by AKC standard just because yes. that's the common one. The standard is um, what AKC puts out there about the size of your dog, um, how big they're supposed to be, how much they, they're supposed to weigh, yeah. and the, um, the things that are unique about your dog. Tell, right. us, tell us about the standard for a Papillon. And the standard for UKC and AKC are almost identical. Mm -hmm. So their height at the withers, it, which is right here at the shoulder, is between 8 and 11 inches. In any taller and smaller than that, they can be faulted, and then when it gets to a certain, I think over 12 inches, it becomes disqualified. They just get too big. Now you will see some very large papillons, but typically they are 8 to 12 inches at the shoulder. They are also supposed to appear longer than taller. They are not to be a square dog. They're a little longer than taller, and he meets that criteria. The other standard is they must have some white and they must have some color. And for the confirmation ring, the color must be all over the ears and down over the eyes in order to qualify. The rest of the dog can be white or it can be in any color. And any color is acceptable as long as there is white also. But you will often see puppies born with some white on their ears. They are not correctly marked for the confirmation ring. But they can certainly, it has no effect on the rest of their temperament or their abilities to do anything. Mm -hmm. Also in the confirmation ring, as many things go, some things are now, at this time, more preferred than others. Originally, the Papillon face was entirely dark. It is now trans, transmitted or transferred to, they want a symmetrical split in the face with a white blaze. 
So that is what is now preferred in many ranks. It's not a disqualification or a fault if it's not, but it's just the current preference. And I have seen since he's only three years old, so it's been five years since I started looking at papillons. I, when I was looking at papillons in the show ring, white was the preferred color. So you would see a lot of white, mostly white dogs. And then it's, it's kind of swinging the other way now where you're seeing more color. He has a lot of color for a papillon, uh, which is what I want. So I was very pleased with the color he showed up as. And they change a great deal from the time they're puppies till the adult coloration that he got now. When he was a puppy, he was shades of brown. He had some of the white markings. His blaze was much larger. But as he aged, the dark sable, he is considered a white and sable dog. So all the sabling came in. And his lips are not perfectly symmetrical because on this side you can see a dark lip. And on that side, he does not have a dark lip. So he also always looks like he has a little bit of an attitude going on. He does have an attitude. <laughs> and he does. He does, he does have an attitude. <laughs> so, yes. 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 And their colors continue to change because when, uh, he's only three, but yeah. they're always, always seeing the, the white progressing up his blaze. And they start to get what they call ticking on their white feet. That you start to see very faint coloring come out on their feet as they age. So. Okay, so one of the things, Sue, that I found interesting, because you know I did my little homework here, um, and so in the world of Goldens, which is my breed, our um, hair back here is called our pants, but not so for fancy Ezra. <laughs> this hair back here is called his culottes. 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 So that is called his culottes. Oh, yes. So I was. I giggled yes. when I saw that, and I was very because he's a very much a fancy dog. Yes, he he's and that is breed standard. Also, he yes. has to have all this culotte hair yes. down here. Their tail must be arched up over their back. It cannot be a flat tail, and the, it can hang on either side. But they want that plume. So they want the plume here. They want the hair here. Good, good boy. The ear mm -hmm. fringe. This frill is a requirement on their chest. The feathers here on the back of the front legs. Now the back, his back legs are to be trimmed down from here down, and the feet are to be hair-like or pointed. They're not rounded, they are pointed like a hair, and they're trimmed that way. And that's pretty much the only trim you do on a papillon is trim their feet and the back of their legs, and that's it. You don't trim anything else for the show ring. How about Shed? He is a single-coated dog, so he does not have the seasonal big sheds. Uh, you will always get some glitter. We like to talk about your hair. Uh, but yes, he does not have a big shed the, the seasons of the year like many dogs do. And they're very easy to care for. He gets groomed or bathed once a week and it takes about an hour and a half from the time he is bathed to the time he is dried because you want to be sure to get them dried down to the skin. And that's about it. It doesn't mat if you keep them bathed and it's very silky. The other thing about breed standard is, I know Goldens are called a jacketed breed, which means the hair right here is short, and that's breed standard. This is not a Maltese coat. Yes, the tail is very long, but this coat is not Maltese silk. This is to be jacketed in this fashion, this short hair, and it just grows down that way. No, I'm touching you. But, but the frill, frill is very important. What's the frill? The frill in is what? Is See how it's layered? Oh, right here. Okay. Under his chest. Oh, okay. That is... Yeah. That's a new word. I never heard of that. frill, yes. Yeah. Like so that is required. And the average weight and the standard would be three to nine pounds, depending on the size of the dog. He is six and a half pounds. So he is a very good height. He's 10 inches at the withers. He is six and a half pounds, so he's a very good weight. His head is very proportional. There's all kinds of... When the judge... Uh, looks at them at the show ring. He, they're looking at the angle of the ears because the ears can either be too high, set too high on the head, like straight up, like they cannot be like a German Shepherd. They cannot droop down too far so it would look as they, though they were coming off just directly the sides. But the ears are at 45 degree angles. They cannot be pointy like a German Shepherd. They are to be rounded at the edge. And then there's also requirements for the muzzle stop the dimension of the muzzle to the head. So a judge is looking very quickly at a lot of things, and even the eyes. There's where the muzzle stop is in relation to the inner corner of the eyes. 
So there are a lot of fine details to such a little dog, huh? You're a very good boy. So um, tell us a little bit. Every breed has their health issues yes. that they screen for. If the breeders that you are buying from, and please, we'll say this every time we do one of these segments, please buy from responsible breeders that do their health clearances. So what are the health clearances for a papillon? Well, one of the genetic diseases they've identified in papillons and that the good responsible breeders make sure they are not breeding is called progressive retinal atrophy. And that is something that is genetically carried. And as long as you, have, you breed two dogs that have none of that, that they are called clear, then you will not see it in your dog. Some people will breed, they first of all they won't test, some people will breed a carrier with a clear and then you're going to get that, that possible you know, atrophy which just means the dog is going to go blind uh, in a very early age. And this breed lives to be 17 years old. So you don't want that kind of thing that's easily preventable at a young age, you know, before they're even bred, to be dealing with throughout their life. The other thing is, as in many toy breeds, is the luxating patella, which means the kneecap in the rear leg does not have enough groove to stay in location, and so it will dislocate. And the surgery for that is two to three, two to four thousand dollars per leg, plus a long recovery period. So you want to, if you're looking for a dog for any competition, certainly, and even a companion dog, you want to ask about the patellas in the parents of the dog. Okay, so now tell us, um, we know that Ezra is a very accomplished papillon um, because you are um, a very uh, connected owner with your dogs and you do a lot of activities with them. And I know that he just got his urban CTC, congratulations. Correct. thank you. Um, so these dogs are highly recommended for agility and I know that is your, um, one of your goals with him. Um, I also know that he holds the highest rally title. Um, you so, be the highest. So, well, the highest. Yes, no, yes, yes, yes. yes. So, what, so what tell us of his accomplishments. Yes, we'll start with why did I get a Papillon? I wanted a toy breed, but when I, I talked with breeders, I required a very biddable breed, a biddable dog, in other words, a dog that can be easily trained, is interested in working with me, that has the happy go lucky temperament, and is able to do whatever sport I want to do, which at the time included tricks, obedience, and agility. So I was able to get Ezra, and he has proven himself sit in every venue that I have put him in, and down. He has his, as I said, United Kennel Club, confirmation champion, which I had never been in a confirmation ring before and I just wanted to try it. It's not my thing. Yeah, it's so, not so we yes. did confirmation. So I know he, you know, he is his breed standard. And then we moved into rally obedience and we finished with what they call the rally advanced excellent title, which at the time was the highest title in rally. They have since added masters level and champion titles. But we did qualify and were invited to compete in the national championships this some this June, this past June, we didn't go, but we were qualified and were able to go if we wanted to do that. We also were working on tricks. We have trick titles in both AKC and the Do More With Your Dog venue. Uh, he is a trick dog champion through Do More With Your Dog, and he is a trick dog performer with American Kennel Club. He also has his canine good citizen title. He has his canine good citizen advanced or community canine and he has his urban turn around, urban canine title. We just received that. And what else do you have? I don't know, but we'd like to bring you back and have you do all the I things. Know, I know. You talked about that fun. before. Yeah. Can you can do a lot of things. He can. And he, well, we have to do 15 uh, different tricks over the, let's see, you have to do 10 and then 5 and then 10. So he's got quite a repertoire of different tricks. And they have to be difficult to wear in their chain behavior. So on one command, he goes out to a box, opens the box, brings to me what is in the box, and goes back and closes the box. Come on. Required on one command. And he does that. We've got to do this because we talked about doing that before. Yes, and it's very entertaining. And that's the other thing about Papillons. They are a very happy-go-lucky breed. And he does have his preferences of, who, of people he likes, as long as he can meet the person first mm -hmm. on his terms. 
Like, he doesn't want somebody to just walk up and touch him. He says, let me take a look at you first, and then, why don't you look at the people? There. Could you yeah. have the cookies? Yes, could I have the cookies? That's why. You should give the camera and the cookies. Turn yeah, around. Right. Turn around. Give me one. Give me one. Oh, you have the fingers, though. You might have I know. The I've been getting it. Yeah. Yeah. There. And Ezra was trained uh, with positive reinforcement because I wanted a dog that would trust me, have a relationship with me, and do what I asked because I asked him to do it. I don't want to force him ever to do it, and if he's not comfortable doing something, I would not ask him to do it. But our latest endeavor, which we did agility, okay, I'm over agility. Are you over agility? <laughs> we did barn hunt. Uh, he's been introduced to both of those, agility and barn hunt, which barn hunt, of course, is finding the rats. He was introduced to them. He did an appropriate alert on that. But my new passion is nose work, and he is a natural at it. It's the spaniel it comes coming out, out and it's coming out. Yes. So we can now put him in a, a room with 30 different objects and put a Q-tip that has less than a drop of essential oil on it in one of those boxes, and neither of us know which one it is, release him, and within a minute, he will find that odor. So his his... Spaniel is coming out of it, and he really enjoys it, and I do too, because you can train it at home, and you don't really need a lot of special equipment. Sit. Anything Sit. else we need to know about him? Uh, just um, if he ever comes up missing, you <laughs> he's at my house. He's at your house. He, he is darling. I've never been this close to him before, and he's oh, really he's, he's Just he's true to all toy breeds, dental issues are yes. important, so you must take care of their dental issues. Sit. So, so important, and, and I don't know that people realize the gravity of a dental situation. Right. Um, it can lead to heart issues. Mm -hmm. um, so it really is yeah. important to be able to um, clean their teeth, brush their teeth, um, and you started as a puppy. I'm I did, sure. yes. I did. And there's a whole thing now called cooperative care, another level of training <laughs> where you teach the dog to accept cooperative care. For example, sit. I can say to him, open and just easily he opens his mouth like that. I can say, eyes, and I can work on his eyes. I can say things like, chin, think about it, chin, and he puts his hand in my, his chin on my hand, enough, enough. So, I can, so I can do this. So, yeah. so this makes all of us feel really so good. <laughs> my Ella has an eye issue, and I have to take her to Cleveland every six months to have that eye checked. And I use chin because when she puts her um, chin in my hand, then it's really, really easy for the ophthalmologist to be able to check, um, put those drops in her eyes and look deep in her eyes because the ophthalmologist gets this close to their face and she just lays her head right there and does not move. Um, and, and when you do this, when you do this with them, when they are young puppies, I am able to scale my dog's teeth if need be. They will lay on the floor and let me scale their teeth if needed. Um, so it, it's just really, really important um, to be able to do that. And in the end, you save yourself a lot of money not having to pay for dentals at a vet's office, which has to put them under anesthesia. And that's a risk. And that is so. one thing, I'm glad you brought that up. Papillons are susceptible to different types of anesthesia. Your vet needs to be aware of which kinds they can use on a papillon. It's not just toy breed, it's what is appropriate for a papillon. And it is, there's online, you can find the recommended uh, anesthesias. There's two different kinds. So you want to, you can go to Papillon Club of America website if you're interested in that or need that information. He just loves Sue. Yeah. He does. He just loves her. Which again is a Papillon breed. Once he's comfortable with people, he just loves them. We have grandchildren staying with us right now, and as much as he is my dog, at night he goes and lays on the couch with the grandkids while they read books. And he plays with their 60-pound dog. And he's he's not afraid of dogs. He just doesn't know his own size. And so big dogs, you have to be careful when you have a little dog not to put them in a dangerous situation with big dogs to where innocent play can turn dangerous because if he gets pounced on, he gets hurt. Okay, well now all of our filming goes out on um, Armstrong, it also yes. goes on YouTube. Yes. So now all those people are going to know that you promised me that you're coming back to do tricks. I will, I absolutely will. He loves okay. to do his tricks. Because I have wanted to do that for a long time with you mm -hmm. and your dog. Yes. So. Well, thank you very, very much. And, thank you for um, having us. You're very, very welcome, and we will go on to uh, our next stop.
We're here to start our presentation on the second dog that we're going to highlight today, and with me is Penny Boris with her dog Snickers. Snickers, and of course Robin, who was in the last presentation. So we're going to go on and talk about Snickers. And Snickers is a she is a Shetland sheepdog, also known as a Sheltie, and she is also a rescue with the Western Pennsylvania Sheltie Rescue. Okay. How old is she? Snickers just turned eight. Oh, so she's a, she's a senior citizen. She's a senior. She yeah, came into rescue good. when she was five. Okay. Um, very depressed. Uh, a lot of the dogs that we get in the rescue come from all different circumstances. We've had some come in from Amish puppy mills. Lots of them are surrenders that their owners can no longer care for them for whatever reasons. So we take them in and hopefully find them a forever home. And this one you decided to keep? Um, yes, my <laughs> husband, he's a foster failure. So he's a foster <laughs> failure. Oh, my he is, is he <laughs> is. Um, almost everyone we've got, it's because Steve tells me that uh, they want to stay with us. So. Oh, I see, okay. But she does prefer him actually over me. She oh, is, okay. she, yeah, she does she prefer men. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the breed standards. So what are these dogs supposed to look like and weight and everything else? Well, they're supposed to be 16 inches high from the shoulder up okay. and their weight should be anywhere between 16 and 25 pounds. Um, Snickers is 16 and she weighs 22 pounds. She looks very good. She looks very good, she's especially great. for an older dog. And she yeah, 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 she's not and she's made, yeah, she looks really overweight. Good. No. Um, her ears, Sue was commenting she liked her ears, but her ears are actually a little low. Okay. And probably uh, when they glued them when she was a puppy, they were either glued too tight or they left it on too long. Although some are born and their ears actually naturally tip on mm -hmm. their own. I, I did have one that did that. Um, but she's uh, pretty good for what she should be actually for a Sheltie. What do they consider this coloring? What, what do they this label is, this? This is called a sable mahogany. Okay. But they do come in other colors. There's blue merles. There's, um, we were just talking earlier about the white headed. The uh -huh. tri color. The tri, yes. Um, and I was talking with Robin earlier. A lot of our dogs come in, as I said, from backyard breeders. Uh, one of the worst things anyone can do is breed two blue moles together. You start doing that and you end up with blindness, deafness, and um, that's why it's, it's very important to, if you're going to purchase a puppy from a breeder, that it is a reputable breeder. Great. We talk about that over and over and over again. Please, please, please do your research on your breed. Please do the research on your breeders and make sure that they do their clearance and, and that they're educated on the breed that they're exactly. selling. Um, so many times, you know, it's what's the popular breed out there? Well, let me get a, a male and a female of that mm -hmm. breed and let me make puppies. And then we um, have a population of dogs that have huge health issues and um, they end up, you know, they end up in shelters and, and it's, you now, know, it's a problem. Now the breed standard has nothing to do with the white collar. They don't have to have a full white collar. I like it. Uh, yeah, they have to have at least a pure full white collar. Oh, I didn't realize that. Unless it's a blue merle or as we were saying, the white headed. Um, but yeah, they do have to have a full white collar. Oh, I didn't know that because I know some of the collies that are that are shown in competition don't have a full white collar. My yeah. mother always liked the full white collar. Yeah, I think they're very, I think they're very pretty. And, and the mask too. But the blades, they don't right. always have to have the blades. Right. Yeah. But again, people confuse Shelties with uh, miniature collies, mm -hmm. and they are not. Yeah. There's, there's no. Yeah. Two there is no miniature collie. There is no. There such is no thing as a miniature collie. Yes, these are no. Shetland sheepdogs. These. Um, let me see, these came from the UK. The Shetland Islands. Yes. 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 And Collies came from Scotland, I think. Right. If, if my notes are right. No, I'll have to look I, that I back up. But that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, actually, there are Shelties in Scotland Islands. Yes, but originally they came from the Shetland yes. Islands in the yes, UK. Yes, they yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. So they they call them cousins. They call they call oh, shepherds and collies cousins. Yes. And they were originally used for um, herding sheep. Hmm. So they're very good at agility. Mm -hmm. Very good at agility. Some do very well at dot diving. Obedience, they're really good in because they're very um, eager to please. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yes. So, so yeah, that. and they're very intelligent dogs, very sensitive dogs. They aren't the type of dog that will just come up to you and say, oh, hi, hi, my name's Snickers, I want to meet you. They're very standoffish until they get to know you. But once they get to know you and trust you, um, they're wonderful companion dogs. Yeah. They do have something in common with your beloved Danny. And what is that? They can be barkers. Oh, uh -huh. yes. Yes, they can be barkers. So, um, but they are a herding dog, so things that they like to chase things. So as puppies, that's always something that you want to be able to put in the right direct into um, a positive thing and not into a negative thing. Um, so, but they're, so as I read my information, because I don't know your breeds and I have to look them up and read the information, the information that they give on those two things that could be somewhat not a positive thing, they put the spin on it and they say the positive thing about them being somewhat aloof and, and barking when something approaches them that they do not know is they make for a good watchdog in the fact that no, they're not mean, but yes, they will alert you that somebody has come into your yard or somebody has pulled into your driveway or is at your door. And, um, and that is helpful when you're home yes. is to let you know that somebody has has come onto your property. So um, so that is a good thing. We do like our dogs to alert us that somebody is there. I like my dogs to alert me that somebody is there and then be quiet. They don't need to keep alerting me that somebody is that there. That doesn't happen so, to show us. They keep, keep alerting you. <laughs> Until they actually see what they're barking at. And they, they are sound sensitive to like vacuum sweepers. Um, Snickers here goes crazy if you sneeze or cough. Okay. Um, just they all have their own little quirks of that, right. but all right. breeds do really. Right. So they come in the same color variation, basically, though, that collies do. Yes, yes. So there's blue merles and sables and tries right. and, and whites. Are yes. there whites like collies? You will see, yes. Okay, okay. So, um, and I was, I did not know about the whites, so that was something. Um, let's talk about their grooming. Because they are double coated dogs, yes. so shedding is shedding an issue. Shedding is, is seasonal, mm -hmm. and I, it's a joke at my house because I'll groom them and I'll say, Well, I didn't know you had a puppy on there. Yes. Oh, you get, you oh, get yeah. a little dog on uh -huh. there. Yeah, I have golden, so you're not yes. telling me anything I don't know. That's okay. You have to love your Dyson. Yes, you, yes, you have to be in love with your vacuum cleaner. <coughs> well, I've gone through two constant. robotic vacuum sweepers, so. Oh, yeah. really? Yes. Oh, you have to. Yes. It's constant. Yes. But yes. Snickers, my shellies that I have, I try to brush them at least once a week. Mm -hmm. um, if you can do more, that's wonderful. Okay. Uh, bathing is really easy with the Sheldy. Um, I like to blow mine dry, but you don't necessarily have to. And then, of course, you want to keep their feet and their nails done. Mm -hmm. um, now, unlike the Papillon, though, we do take the little fringes here. Yes. Turn Good girl. Good job. Hi, sweetheart. And we just pull it down and snip it with texturizing scissors. Great. Thanks, and sweetheart. then she was saying her, they have pants too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We don't have culottes. We are not fancy. We just wear pants. But on my shelf. French dogs wear culottes. Yeah. Yeah. Just wear pants. I kind of like that culottes. I do, me too. But on uh, my little female shellies, I call them skirts. But it is yeah. technically their pants. pants. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and feathers. And their feathers. These we trim these, and of course you always want to trim the pads of their feet. Right. And of course their nails. And then we do the same thing back here to their hawk. We trim just scissor trim with these. What about ears? Are they prone to ear infections? Um, no. Good. Shelly's most prominent problems with Shelly's is thyroid. That's a big issue. Okay. And if they have skin conditions, that's one of the first things that that will check usually is the thyroid to rule out that everything's okay there. And then they also have the uh, flexation with the kneecaps. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it, it, even if you buy from a reputable breeder, that can always happen. Right. There's no guarantee right. that that's not. But they also have it in their elbows. Right, so hips and elbows are a clearance that you want to make yes. sure that they and have. eyes right hips right okay so those are things that are common with my breed too hips eyes elbows um and again those clearances are not guarantees that it won't right. happen however it is one step closer to them being um favorable yes because there can always be a recessive gene somewhere that right. or or an injury right that or can an cause injury. it usually yes. it's an injury right 
dot diving, jumping, right. you know, can, can cause those types of things. So um, tell us a little bit about the things that Snickers likes to do. Now Snickers is a rescue and she is eight years old. So that puts her um, a little bit towards the um, older end of things, but right. tell us some of her things that she, she loves likes to do. She loves to play fetch with the ball. Mm -hmm. um, she loves to chase me around the yard is what she does. Um, she's uh, really a couch potato is what is her preference. Now, if you tell her, do you want to go buy buys or get ice cream or something, she goes crazy. She knows what that is. She loves her walks, um, and we walk her daily. We have a really big yard, so we play ball and frisbee and stuff like that with her. She could be a champion frisbee catcher, really. Um, but she, most Shelties in general are just happy being with their They're own people. Dog. They're very people. much a people dog. That's, yes. That was one of the things that was stated about them, that they are very much a, a people dog. And we tell people when they contact our rescue, we, you know, we tell them, you know, if you want a Shelby, they're awesome dogs, but if you don't want a dog right under your feet, a Shelby's not for you. They're kind of like a long-haired golden, like a mm -hmm. tri-colored golden on them. But yeah. the, um, the um, personalities, mm -hmm. don't some of them sometimes have a little bit difficult personalities? Or is that just that you need to check whenever you go, and you always need to see the mother and the father ahead of time too? If well, you're going to go to a breeder, you need to see all the dogs. Yes, yes, because Shelby's do have, I've seen puppies that, and again, it's poor breeding, um, they'll just go in a corner and just start screaming. Right. They're not even near. Mm -hmm. um, they can be a tendency to be over shy. Uh, there are, Shelby's can be nippers. We don't recommend that anybody with small children have a Sheltie because they're herders. So kids are running through the house and what happens, the Sheltie's doing what it's, right. it's instinct and they start nipping. There's, a, there's a, um, a fairy tale image that so many people have that is not really a fairy tale, it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And that is a small child and a puppy together. Yes. Their vision is small child, in the yard playing with a little puppy and it's a beautiful image but the reality of it is a nightmare because right. what do puppies do they chase and they nip and they bite and what do little kids do they run they grab they pull they cry it's just a terrible terrible mix right it's it's a terrible mix and it really doesn't matter what the breed of the dog is a, a small puppy and a young child is a young child is not and there's a lot of breeders out there that will not sell puppies to um, families that have young children under the age of five or eight. Right. Yeah. Um, Reputable yeah. breeders, and I cannot right. stress that enough. Because right. when you work in rescue and you see what comes in, you just cannot stress it enough. And um, there's a lot of people out there, though, that will even come to rescue because they're looking for the bargain dog. They want what they perceive as the full-blooded Sheltie but they think because they're coming to rescue, it's free. Well, it's, you know, we have to regroup. We're not in the business of selling dogs, so to speak. Right. But we have to regroup the expenses that we put into the dogs. Um, we have dogs come in that are heartworm positive, and it's a very expensive treatment. Exactly. It's not been uncommon for the rescue to spend three to five thousand dollars on a dog and the adoption fee is only $245. We're not regrouping anything, but a lot of it is from people not taking proper care of their pets, uh, again, the poor breeding. Mm -hmm. uh, Snickers, for what she came from, I think she's done pretty well. She's a, she is a nice girl. She's a very nice girl. Took a few seconds to warm up, uh -huh. just like Breed says, and then she's been, she's been very, very, very sweet. Um, very sweet little girl. So, anything well, else we need to know about shelters? Um, What's the three most important things I should know if I want to get a shelter? Three most important things you should know is that they're very intelligent. They need jobs. Yes. I always tell people that. Yes, they need a job. Give they're them a hurting. job. Yes. Yes. Um, and Snickers, I have taught her. It took a while, but and they'll catch on. Like the first two, first two times you show them something, boom, they've got it. Snickers has now learned when I take the laundry downstairs, I'll deliberately drop a sock and I'll say, get the sock, bring it downstairs, and she does, and she'll put it in the basket for me. Good girl, uh, I'm hired. Yeah, she's got a job. Um, and as, um, I forgot your name, Robin. Robin said, they are barkers. Um, 
But for senior people, senior to senior shelties are awesome because they're perfectly content sitting at home all day with you. But as puppies, they're pretty high energy. Very, very active as puppies. Yes, yeah, so very people active. need to know that. If you live in a second floor apartment in the it's city, maybe not a good pick for you. Right. You know, so, right. Um, yeah, so you want to be able to have space for them to run, room for them to, to work. So, um, Penny, we are very appreciative of the work that you do in, in rescue, and we thank you for that because, um, that, unfortunately, it's a very needed service, and we're, we're glad that you in the past, have been devoted to that. Since 2014, it's, it's hard to believe we've taken in over 130 shelters. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Well, much, we, much needed yeah. in the area. We really appreciate that. Do you want to? No, yes. We want to show you one thing here before we before we break and, yeah. and move on. Um, so many times people yeah. say that this Sheltie is a miniature collie, and it's not, it's not true. There's no such thing as a miniature collie. Um, but we do want to show you the difference right. between a back. collie and a Sheltie. So, um, we're giving you, table back just a yeah, bit. we're going to give you a little bit of a preview. If you want to take her off, I'll move the, the table out of the way. Um, we are going to show you a collie and a Sheltie together. So just go ahead and put him over there. So there is a big difference between the two, but so here we have a collie and a Sheltie. So you can see, so you can see the difference. Um, but they do very much look, coloring-wise, um, she does look like a miniature version of a collie. But they're, but they're not. They're not the same breed. Um, they are, they are similar. But Danny, keep your nose over here, good boy. Um, but they are different. They are different breeds. So we just thought we would let you see the difference in the size between a collie and a sheltie. And also the so, coloring is very similar. The coloring yeah, is very similar. Yes. yes. And the markings. And um, and there are but, sheltie's that are light, like Dan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lighter. Yes. And morals and yes. yes. So so Penny, thank you very very much thank for bringing her in. He's going to go to sleep. We're done. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The third dog we want to do today in our programming is a collie, a rough collie. So I'm going to turn this all over to Robin because this is one of the, she always tells me, this is his compliment. If she didn't have a golden retriever, she'd have Danny. Now, if I didn't, if, yeah, I would take this dog. This Danny. Yeah, I'm not so sure any collie, but I would take Danny. I, I would take Danny and my Can girls would love it if I took Danny. He's, before this is over, we know it's that he will going be to take long. He's gonna there he goes. He's, he's down, down right. and done. That he's just gonna in a few minutes he'll be flat out. Um, so Sue said he's a rough collie, which means that relates to his coat. His coat. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so there are smooth collies. There are. Their fur is probably oh maybe an inch, inch and a half long. Yes, and it it, it, it reminds I look at them and wouldn't recognize them right away um, for being a collie if it wasn't for that nose, mm -hmm. that telltale mm -hmm. nose that there he goes, he's going. No, no, he's going to sit up. No, he's <laughs> um, Danny's trademark is to lay down and to lay flat. He's notorious for it. Um, so I also found out that, um, so coloring, the colors that a collie can come in. So what are, what are the different colors that they can come in? Much the same that we talked about as far as a Sheltie. You're going to have the sable and white. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are very, very sable. They're almost this uh, light, light, light brown that you see here. Okay. Uh, Danny is not really a mahogany, but he has a lot of bark on his coat. The joke is that for people who like to frost their hair and have different colors of hair, it would cost a fortune oh, compared yeah. to him because he must have at least 20 different colors on him. Very pretty. And um, they also come in blue merle mm -hmm. and the tricolor. I've always had sables, the, the uh, sable and white ones. Okay, I found out an interesting fact when I was doing my research. They come in a white. They do. Uh, I've only seen one or two of them at the breeders. Okay. That doesn't really turn me on, so no. I would never have one. No. But they do come white. Yeah, they come white, but they're not. It's not an overall white. The coloring. Um, 
So when I was reading descriptions of the colors, they talk about the colors with white markings. Mm -hmm. So this would be his white marking. Um, the whites are white with colored markings. So their faces have color and there's some color back towards their tails. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the flip flop of this um, where you see um, all this color um, on the ones that I saw pictures of. This was all white but their heads still had coloring. Mm -hmm. um, the picture that I saw was of a, a white with a merle coloring on his, on his face. And it was, it was very interesting because I've not seen that. So breed standard, um, 24 to 26 inches height for a male. Right, he's probably just at the very top of that. Okay, and for a female, 22 to 24 inches. Okay. okay. Um, Popularity, I, I meant to do that for the other breeds and I forgot, but prop, popularity um, out of 194 breeds for AKC, the Collie ranks 37th in popularity. You know, there was a time when they were right at the very top. And when would that have been? Whenever it was Lassie. Whenever it was Lassie, yes. Lassie was, we, we talk about that. Sue and I do therapy dog work together and um, we talk about how sad it is that kids nowadays have no idea who Lassie is. Um, they no just, idea at all. No, none. none. Not when we go to the nursing homes. Yes, everybody says, here comes Lassie. And I had one of these when I was growing up. They were yes. at one point one of the most popular dogs. Right, right. Because everybody wanted Lassie. Right. And here he goes, he's getting ready. He's going to go down. Damn. He can, he can go down. I'm, okay. sure that, I'm sure that they can film him down there. Of course, the, the most noticeable thing about them is the long nose. Yes, yes. And, um, uh, the eyes, and the eyes are issues and stuff like so that. So let's, really watching his let's, eyes. um, Let's talk about that part before we move on. So the eyes, his eyes are kind of close together if you, um, if you look at him. And the eyes pose a health issue in, Tremendous. in collies. Tremendous. In fact, that's one of the biggest issues with, eye, with uh, collies. Uh, some, a breeder will take their young puppies yeah, to an eye specialist that. in the beginning just to get an idea and to get some clearance on it because it's such an issue. And there's actually a doctor that comes up to in Canberra who used to, who did a test on the collie and on their eyes. And you can see he's very food oriented, so this will get him up in a heartbeat. I, I, now you're giving your wrong end um, of the camera. To all you viewers out there that is watching this program and you watch Sue um, periodically do programs, in a second, I want it filmed that she gives Danny a treat. Because my joke with her is she carries them in her pocket but never gives them to him. Never. Never heats my treats. It's on film. We have, it, we have it official that she actually gave him a cookie. So, um, so he won't be smelling my pockets now. No. He'll go after yours. So let's get back to the eyes. Um, I found that interesting that um, they do take puppies mm -hmm. that are six to eight weeks old to the ophthalmologist and Absolutely. have their eyes screened. Absolutely. Yeah, and there's a, there's a test that the breeders should do um, beforehand. Um, for progressive retinal atrophy is the test that they're mm -hmm. looking for. So it's called PRA, um, and it's a clearance that they do before they breed them. Also, an MDR1 is a test that is a clearance that they do, and it is a multi-drug sensitivity test for collies. Um, I know that there's that type of issue um, in Aussies, again a herding breed, mm -hmm. where this test, um, it's a genetic test, and it tests, it looks for the gene, the normal gene, the carrier, or the affected gene. Um, this gene allows drugs to cross the blood brain barrier. So if certain drugs that we use in our animals are administered to a collie that is affected by this, it will cross that blood barrier and go to their brain and can cause neurological problems. There was either, and I want to say it was either free medicine and Penny's still off to the side here, I'm not sure whether it was free medicine or what it was, but there was one that on the box it said absolutely without a question, do not, not give it to a call. Right. Ivermectin, which right. is a common, it is a common um, drug used in heartworm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Shelties have cannot it. have it. Right. right. So they've now changed that as far as collars are concerned. There's okay. no, there's no concern now with that. But with Ivermectin? Okay. Well, so some vets are saying that they've 
change that, yes. But um, I, if the dog hadn't been tested for the end of the I just would say. Wait, wouldn't do it, right, mm -hmm. right. But is it, I wonder if it's a common thing to a herding breed, because I think Aussies are out there yes. with that too. So yes. I wonder if it's something that's hurt, and I'm, I'm not sure, because, mm -hmm. I'm, because I'm, this is, like I said, every time we do one of these, I'm looking up these breeds that we're bringing in because they're not my heart breed, so it's not a breed that I'm super familiar with. But but I know that um, I know that there are certain breeds that you have to be careful with common medications. The, and this is why it is so very very important that you know your breed inside and out because a veterinarian has to know too many things and they cannot know everything. And you need to be your dog's advocate. You need to be able to say to your vet, no, my Papillon cannot have right. that type of anesthetic because your vet might not know that right away. And it's routine that the techs set up the anesthetic and do whatever. So you need to know your breed and you need to be their advocate. So um, not only is it important to know these clearances that you your breed that you're researching or that you want to buy need to have, but you need to know um, the health issues that are pertinent to your breed right. to be able to protect them even from the vet mm -hmm. because those kinds of things can happen. So you need to know those things. A lot of, uh, talking about collies, rough collies, a lot of rough collies end up in shelters just like the um, little shelters do because people don't realize what they're getting into when they get this. And our biggest joke is, if you have a collie, not so much a Shelby, but a collie, you have to truly love dog hair because it is on everything the rest of your life. Right. And the joke that I always do whenever I'm around people is I say, this is how I eat a hot dog. Mm, dog hair. There's dog hair through my entire house and it's constant. And you also have to be aware of, we talked about it in the previous presentation about the Shelby, you have to not be disturbed by barking. Barking and running. I, you know, I complain, especially Danny. Uh, if you know that if you come to the, bar, the dog park, you see him running the fence. He will run my fence line, which is about 400 feet, probably, I'd say 25, 30 times a day on a weekend. And I said, he's driving me crazy. And someone turned to me who was not a dog person at all, or very little one, and they said, if you didn't want a dog that was going to bark and run, why did you get a herding dog? And I thought, hmm, good point. Do you know what I found interesting? What? When I was researching Danny, when mm -hmm. I was researching colleagues, they had a, um, they had a, a sentence in there about um, what you should and should not do with colleagues or whatever. And it said, do not leave a collie in your backyard unattended because they will bark. Bark and bark. And, and bark. bark. Yes. And if bark. you're out there with them and you're engaged with them, but if you leave them out there mm -hmm. on their own, they will run and mm -hmm. they will bark. And I thought, yes, they do. Because yes. he does. And, he, and what is he doing? He's herding the cars as they and come the to cars. in and out. Yes. Hey, um, yes. going back, we forgot to say, where are they from? I don't even know. They are from... Scotland, did you say? Yes, Scotland. Okay. And they were sheep herders. Oh, okay. They were... They were to her cheek, that's what that's what they were from, and the Shelties were um, UK, so mm -hmm. um, they called them cousins. But um, life expectancy, twelve to fourteen years. Um, I haven't been that lucky. I've no. had six of them, and all I've lost four of them between nine and ten, and I've had one live to be fourteen. Well, so and you made it, it once, yeah, mm -hmm. just one who? time. Who who made fourteen? Um, Boomer. Boomer. Oh, I yeah. didn't know Boomer. Two, two uh, back two dogs. Okay. I've had them since I was sixteen. They are my favorite, favorite dog in all the world. When I got him, we often laugh about this, people said, why are you getting another dog? And at the time, I didn't have a collie. And my comment was, because I miss that collie personality. There's nothing like them. Right, right. They're just the Everyone lovely. has, you have quite a few dogs, um, but he's your heartbreak. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I will always have a collie, which, and I like, I look at the Sheltie and I think, Wow, what a better idea. Weighs 19 pounds, pick that dog up, throw that dog in the car and stuff like that. Oh, no. No. You have to, I mean, these get tough for you when you get older to have a dog this big because it's difficult to take care of them. Yeah. So <coughs> let's go back to his coat. He's dual coated. And you've heard us say this before, and we talk about the shedding, and it sounds silly, but it really is one of the reasons that people get rid of their dogs mm -hmm. is because they shed. Two biggest reasons people get rid of their dogs. The dogs have too much energy. 
When a dog has too much energy, they get into trouble and they become destructive if that energy is not um, taken care of properly. So, um, and shedding, the dog hair is, it's maintenance, it's mm -hmm. work. First off, he needs to be brushed a couple times a week. If he's not brushed a couple times a week, what happens to his coat? It'll start to mat. It gets mat. And the and other thing, and, and it's only because he does therapy work that he gets as good a care because they are hard to take care of. Yeah. I mean, the little shelties are, what, half this size, and these guys are, are tough because they're so big. And um, one of the things that I do differently with him, now he's going to the rumor as a matter of fact at the end of this week, but I keep his fur extremely short. Mm -hmm. My breeder has a stroke over this because she likes that big puffy look. And I say big puffy look, look in a yard where there's mud. Oh no, 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 we're not doing that. So I have him in a stage where he looks good when we go places, but he doesn't have all that fur hanging like here. You see, he, this should really be out to about here. Yes, it should probably it should be, be about four it inches. It should be down below his. Correct. Down to his hocks. Right, but I, I eliminate that because I can't stand that dripping mud off the fur. Right. It just makes me nuts. Right, right. So, dual coated dogs. Any dog that has a dual coat, if you're doing your research on a breed that you want and it says that they're dual coated, that translates into they shed a lot, mm -hmm. a lot, because they have, they have double coat. They have an undercoat and they have, they have this coarse upper coat. And that undercoat is that soft downy mm -hmm. hair and that comes out a lot. When, when we visit the hospital together, everybody makes fun of me because what's in my hand? She has a lint roller all the time. I carry a lint roller with me. For both of us I because you've got the gold. I carry a lint roller with me because my dogs shed and people love to love on them and hug on them. And when we walk away, we leave parts of us behind all over their pants. Mm -hmm. So I always carry a lint roller for them. Um, I have several of them. I have them in my car. I have them all through my house. Everywhere. Yeah. So do I. So, um, and, and I run my vacuum cleaner sometimes twice a day. It's what we do to have the dogs that we have. Um, so, again, we've talked about this, herding breeds. What are the downfalls of a herding breed? Barking? Barking and running. And running. And they running. love to chase. And as puppies, what's problematic about that, along with the, the running, is usually nipping. Mm -hmm. Because they're, it's who they are. Their instinct is to herd and to get everything in one little spot. And how do they do that to the sheep? They nip at them. They have little, little, they little tiny teeth in the front, yes. which is unbelievable, especially with the collies, I imagine, with the Shelties, too. And boy, if you're not paying attention to them, I've had some of my collies, <laughs> and they'd come up and get you right in the butt, because that was a good, or, or the top of the leg or something, and, and just get your attention very, very quickly. But it's that little tiny nipping move. Right, right, yes. So, lots of energy. Herding dogs um, traditionally have lots of energy because that's what they're bred for. They're bred to work out in the fields mm -hmm. and they're bred to put in long days. So they have to have that kind of stamina. So if you're looking um, at a herding dog, know that. Know that that exercise um, level is pretty high. But as they get a little older, all puppies, I don't care what breed you're looking at, all puppies are work. But then you reach this point. One of the reasons that we started this program, and we always try and say to people, my biggest complaint is, and I love Border Collies, but my biggest complaint is the person who purchases a Border Collie and lives in an apartment. That makes no sense to me at all. If you're going to have a dog like this, you better have a lot of room, or you better be obsessed with walking and giving them a chance to go to a dog park or whatever and run. Yeah. They have to do that. Yeah, or, or, or a husky. Absolutely. We talked about you that have too. To do it. Do you, you know, my the saddest private lesson I ever did was a second floor, um, one bedroom, a two room apartment mm -hmm. with a Siberian Husky. Um, yeah, just that's terrible. Not the place for that dog. So, um, so, so again, when when we're talking about um, breeds, know that this calmness that you saw here, both in Snickers and in Danny. They don't come this way. No. They do not come this way. This they comes run. with age mm -hmm. and um, an environment. Danny knows he's inside, so he's calmer inside than he is outside. People and laugh about that when we visit together because I know many of you know that Robin and I do therapy work together. When he's in the hospital visiting people or if I stop and talk to somebody, 
this is what you're going to have. This is what he does. He does this on the second floor at the hospital, and sometimes we've got people that have to step over because he's not going to move. He just waits until it's time for us to go on to the next thing. And it's strange because he knows, and we always use the term, he knows he's working, so when he's working, this is it. But if I take him to my house right now, and there's people at the hospital that come to the dog park, they'll say, oh no, that isn't what he does. He runs all day long. So, so it's altogether different. So tell me three not good things about Danny. The dog here. Okay. He counter surfs. Okay. Because he's big, so he can counter surf in a heartbeat. Make a sandwich, turn your back, sandwich is gone. All right. You cannot, you cannot trust him. He, he, and he has a, he has a hunger that never stops. He, okay. he wants to eat a lot. Okay. And so you have to watch the weight on the dog. Right. Now, but, you know, we talk about this all the time. You've got to watch the weight on every dog. Yes. Yes. You cannot let these dogs just balloon, balloon, balloon into bigger and bigger dogs because with a collie, the last thing I want to have, I don't care if I have some health issues with him, but boy, I don't want to have hip issues with him at all. Well, you don't so want to I have keep a, his weight down a lot. You don't want to have a health issue that you can prevent. Right. And, and that you can it. prevent that one. Okay, one more bad thing about Danny. The barking. The barking. Oh, the barking. of course, the barking. Okay. That's constant. So let's end on three really great things about Danny. He's a phenomenal therapy dog. He, he is. not only is in part with paws hand delivered, but he also is known as a Hope Animal Assisted Crisis Response Dog. Danny has gone beyond therapy dog work, and he would be a dog that would be called, as a matter of fact, right now with everything North that's Carolina. happening. Mm -hmm. In fact, I just talked to the Hope person and heard from her last night. She said, We haven't been called out yet. But there's a good chance that someone can't will go. get there is the problem. Right, and I probably won't go because of my job, but he's a Hope Animal Assisted Crisis Response Dog. He does one step beyond therapy dog mm -hmm. work to deal with, with people in a situation where they are so emotionally distraught. And you know why? And I always say to Robin, Robin, look what he's doing. And she says to me, but that's what he needs to do. Um, he went to a funeral home a week and a half, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we had three dogs, and he laid down like this, and people come over, put their head on him, pet him, and that stuff. He's very, very, very unthreatening yeah. because he's low keyed, and they, they love that. Mm -hmm. And with and he doesn't grow up with little children. Again, another trait. I don't know what it is. He's never been grown up around little children, and he's wonderful. They're when we go kids. to right to uh, Cambridge Springs and Conneaut Lake and Meadville. He lays down. There'll be five, six, seven kids petting him at one time and he could care less. Right. Pick up their paw, pick up his tail, look at his whiskers, look at we, his eyes, look at his ears. We make his hair stick up. We, we're always playing with his they hair. They do terrible hair. things to him. <laughs> we always make his hair and stick And he up. doesn't care. That's him. And that's why I love him because they're just so low key and, and so nice to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is, he is, a, he is a phenomenal, he is a phenomenal dog. And that nose of his, that long nose of his, he can put that in places you could not even imagine. Yes. He can just get in the tiniest little corners. Um, and garbage cans. Yes, garbage cans. And oh. bags. He loves bags. Paper, garbage cans, nothing is safe. <laughs> if I have, I'm working in my office and I put paper in my, you know, roll it up and put it in a basket, soon it's all over my office because he takes each piece out until I stop him. So that's the kind of stuff he does. Um, one of the things that I want to say before we stop today is that if you um, have any dogs that you would like us to talk about. We have quite a few with uh, Robin's training classes because she has Red Ball Dog Academy or at the dog park. We will try and bring that dog to you and let, give you an opportunity to find out what the dog is like because you've got to do your education, you've got to learn, you've got to do whatever it takes before you purchase a dog and before you make that investment and know what they're like. Yeah. Anything else we need to know? No, that's just... Okay, well thanks very up. much. It was fun doing him. <laughs> He's sleeping so I can... We're going to cut it with him laying down. We're going right to here. cut it with yes. him sleeping because this is what he does best. So yes. thank you very much, and we will catch you the next time we do a program on My Dog and Me.